Hey, hey everybody, Jason here, and I'm back with another quick video for you guys today. Today, we're gonna review the Kyosho RB 6.6. You guys may or may not know this about me, but I actually have owned a whole bunch of Kyosho RB6 cars, the original generation. I still have two or three of them, and I have a ton of parts that still work, for the most part, on this car here. I actually bought this car directly from Kyosho months back and had intended to get the review out a lot sooner than I did, or than I am now, but just work and stuff got in the way, other projects got in the way, and so now we're finally getting to it. So just like we do in all of our reviews, we'll talk about the build, performance, you know, aftermarket value, and then I guess the conclusion. So before we start rocking and rolling on the review, come on over, let me show you exactly what's in my personal car, and then we'll start off with the build. Okay, this is my personal Kyosho RB6.6. I really like this body. I really like the roof line that's on the body. I like the fact that they've got it set up so that it has clearance for all the different transmission setups. The kit, the setup on the car is pretty much still kit. Starting up front, we have raw speed stage two front and rear tires. This is a Savox 1258 servo, Sanwa antennaless receiver. This is actually an Orion R10 Pro speed control. And for whatever reason, I had a special, I was actually running this in a four wheel, so I had a, I threw the Speed Passion fan on there. This is a SureSpeed version three, 13.5 motor. And then out back we have our, uh, the, the newest wing from my company, Rossby. This is a fully laser cut wing right off. It's completely laser cut right from the, right from the factory. So, so that's how I have my personal car outfitted. Overall, my build went really well. The manuals for Kyosho just aren't very clear. They never really have been. But the fit and the finish of the parts is really good. The, just the, the way the screws go into the plastic, the quality of the plastics, overall my build was really good. Really not too many issues. So many nice things about the Kyosho car. The shocks, second to none. By, by far, I would say the Kyosho shocks are the best shocks. The diffs in this car, the diff that comes in the Kyosho cars, I don't know what they do. I don't know if it's the, the diff balls, the, 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 the washers, the, you know, the diff rings. I'm not sure what it is, but these diffs just tend to last longer than any diff in any other car I've ever owned. But I digress. Let's move on to performance. The build was really good. The manual could be a little bit more clear in a few sections, but overall, I thought the build, the fit and finish, very, very good. When we actually buy one of these cars, more often than not, we buy it for its performance. We're looking for that competitive edge. I really feel like performance is broken up into three primary categories, acceleration and braking, jumping and landing, and then cornering. This car tends to really excel on higher grip surfaces. If I only raced on a high grip surface consistently, this car would probably be my first choice, especially if you're on a higher grip clay surface. If you're on slicks, this is an amazing car right out of the box. I mean, it's just very, very good. So I would say that acceleration and braking is good on the higher grip surfaces, but I've noticed that for whatever reason, I tend to struggle a little bit getting the forward bite out of the car that I wanted when the grip went down. There are, there are things that can be done to improve that. You can add some droop up front, you can soften the rear spring, you can put the four gear laydown transmission. All of these things have actually been tried by me and others that run this car. But what I've found personally is that the car, it kind of still has a little bit of a narrow window, even compared to some of the other cars with laydown transmissions. The same setup that works at one track might not always work at another track. With that said, when you nail the setup on this car, it's bullet fast and easy to drive and has really good acceleration and really good braking. When it comes to jumping and landing, I think the car jumps really well. It's very easy to fly, very easy to control the attitude, nose up, nose down, things like that. It, it's really not nearly as forgiving in the landing department though. That's, that's, I would say if this car has one, if there's two weak points to this car for me personally, it's been on the really low grip surfaces, which I have to admit, I don't race on very often. I don't see low grip very often, but the lower grip surfaces, the car just doesn't generate quite as much forward grip as I would hope for. And then on the landing section, it just doesn't seem to be as forgiving as some of the others. And my guess is that there's not very much droop. So there are things that I had played with and I will tell you right now, they made a huge difference. Just adding some droop to the front of the car by unscrewing the front eyelets three or four turns makes a huge difference in the way the car lands. I mean, significantly. Playing around with the, the rear transmission, adding like the four gear laydown makes a huge difference in the amount of forward bite and grip that the car generates out back. So out of the kit, the car jumps good. It definitely could land better, but you can tune on it to kind of bring, to kind of to step it up in those areas. But when it comes to like high grip stuff, and cornering, which we're going into next, that's where this car shines the brightest. 
And so I guess we'll just jump right into it. Cornering. This car is kind of like the touring car of 10 scale buggies. When you're on a high grip track, this thing will kind of carve through the corner, take a set. It doesn't chassis roll super deep. It's just a very fast, smooth, predictable cornering car, especially on the higher grip surfaces. And I think that's, if I think this car shines anywhere, it's on the higher grip surfaces. It's just so fast through the corner and so consistent through the corner. I'm not exactly sure what, what it is that makes the car behave that way on the track. I don't know if it's Ackerman or steering geometry or, the, or roll centers or whatever. I just know that this car, uh, compared to all of my other cars, it would enter the corner very fast, mid corner would carry the speed, and then it was very trustworthy exiting the corner. It just wasn't, it didn't get hooky or do any of the wonky things that some of my other cars have done in the past. So overall cornering very good. Like I guess as a quick recap to the whole performance thing, jumping, landing, cornering, all this stuff, acceleration, braking. If you're gonna run the car on low grip, maybe consider trying the four gear lay down transmission to create a little bit more forward bite, add a little bit more droop to the front of the car. I really feel like it helps the car land just a little bit better. Those two things will definitely help. If you're on high grip, you can pretty much pull it out of the box and put it down and it's gonna be pretty good right off the rip. Value, value is a double-edged sword. I've said it a million times before, I'll probably say it a million times more. There's one side where it's basically the metal and the plastic you get in the box, and the other side is the support system that the company provides by having, by having sponsored drivers, by having parts in local hobby shops. This car is 399 bucks, which is the most expensive two-wheel, or the most expensive popular two-wheel that's out there, but I will tell you, in my opinion, it's a great value. It has the highest quality shocks, a super high quality metals, the diff arguably, the, the diff alone the fact that you don't have to rebuild it every month or so because of how good the quality of the components are, that's a huge benefit. You add in and on top of that, the fact that it comes with all of the different transmission setups that, that are available for the car. And I think at 399, I think Kyosho has brought a very, a very competitive, high quality, high valued model to the market. The flip side though, hasn't been as good for Kyosho. They haven't generated as much support through setup sheets and stuff like that, primarily because they don't have as big of a team as some of the other companies like Team Associated. But I guess if we were gonna cut it short and ask about value, I'd say the value in the box is very good. It's a high quality model. If your local shop carries parts for the car or you have easy access to parts for this car, like maybe you already have the original RB6, I absolutely think it's a good value and it's a car I would absolutely consider if you're a Kyosho fan. You can't win a race, you don't finish. So durability is a factor. So is this car durable? I wouldn't call it a battle tank by any means, but I definitely would not call it fragile. I've seen, I've seen the car break under certain circumstances and it tends to be things like steering blocks, C-hubs or front arms. And it's usually when something is clipped at a very good pace. I actually haven't broken anything on the car. So I, I would have to tell you that in all of my experience with my other original RB6 platforms and this RB6.6, I think the dur durability is actually very good. I don't think any car out there is unbreakable and all, all of these cars tend to have parts that will break at some point or another or parts that tend to be a little bit more fragile in certain areas. For me, when I have broken my Kyosho RB6 cars, it tends to be the front arms or maybe like a front C-hub or something like that. But as long as you keep those parts in your box, every now and then you'll rip a ball stud out of a rear hub. So keep some of those around. But the main parts I would say, if you're gonna buy this car and race it and campaign it, especially at places that don't have hobby shops, front arms and C-hubs and rear hubs. And that's about it. Aftermarket. There's not a monstrous aftermarket for the Kyosha cars. And I believe the reason for this is that there aren't as many of these cars out in the market as there are B6s, as there are TLR 22 platforms. The car's a little bit more expensive. It's, it, it borders on the exotic with a $400 price tag, even though it's a high quality kit, but there aren't as many of them. And for whatever reason, you'll see companies that make really good parts for cars like this car, companies like Exotech, J Concepts, but, but Kyosho guys are a little finicky. They're like Ferrari owners or something. If it doesn't say Ferrari on it, they don't want to put it on the car. So a lot of guys will see other parts by Kyosho or by, and I'm sorry, by J Concepts, which I think makes great parts for this car, steering pieces, they made this front piece. And I would ask guys, why don't you just run the JC piece? And they'd be like, well, it's not made by Kyosho. And I'm like, I don't get it. So for whatever reason, this car has kind of suffered a little bit in the aftermarket, but more people have jumped on board and Kyosho themselves do offer nice, you know, other upgrades and C blocks and D blocks and weights and things like that. So I was at the aftermarket for this car. It's, it's okay. It's, it definitely doesn't compete with any of the other cars. 
but the car is so high quality out of the box, I don't know how much it really truly needs. You can put some of the, you know, the, C, the brass C-block and the D-block and all the adjustable parts on it, but I do think it's a very high quality car right out of the box. Okay, let's talk conclusion. It's a super nice kit. The setup out of the box is pretty good on the higher grip surfaces. On lower grip, you might struggle a little bit. The quality of the components is second to none. The shocks, arguably the very best in the industry. The diff, in my opinion, is probably the very best for any kit that you can buy today. Lasts a very long time, operates very smoothly. It's definitely a car that's worth considering, especially if you have a little bit of support in your area. If your local hobby shop carries Kyosho parts or you're on a higher grip track, this is a car that is absolutely 100% worth considering. I know the price tag is gonna seem a little bit steep at 400 bucks, but if you take some of the other cars that are out there that are 300 or 340 bucks or whatever, and you end up having to build a new diff in the first month or two, that's another 30 bucks or, or at least 25 bucks in parts. If you end up breaking another car that isn't as durable, or if you end up having to buy transmission options and a diff for a car that doesn't come with all the transmission options in the box, all of a sudden, the playing field, that 399 bucks just doesn't seem so outrageous anymore. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this review just as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I appreciate you guys watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. to be exceptionally, exceptionally,